Hey everyone, welcome back. Paul Daniels here, and what I fix daily. So we've got a A1466, this is a 0165 board. You can tell it's got the short little connector there. And what happens with this is it tries to boot, gets a few seconds into it, and shuts down or restarts. Now, overall the machine looked pretty clean, but there was a little bit of a hint in here. I think we've got a bit of a janitor job. Now, there was one other fault that I immediately picked up, and that was the um, the flat flex actually had corrosion on it. And I have noticed that this connector here is somewhat damaged too, physically. Uh, let's switch over to the microscope view. Okay, so we've got this sort of, see it's pushed out like that. It's just been abused a bit much. So I'm not exactly sure how that's happened, but anyway, and there was corrosion along the pins here, but it doesn't seem to be any corrosion on here. But uh, anyway, that's not really the primary issue at hand. What we do have, and you probably can see it, was all these little specks. And these specks are everywhere. You think it's bad on this side? Let's see, speck, speck, speck. Wait till I turn over. And it's everywhere. Okay, so this is basically roach crap. Look at that, all over the clock circuit, over the BIOS area. And I can't remember what you are, your power generator. And down here, 695, 659 I mean, that corrosion there, yeah, it's all over the place. So, most of this will be taken out by the ultrasonic, but there are some pit bits here, like this bit here, which I think we need to rework straight up. And we definitely know this is roaches, because that's a roach leg there, obviously got himself into a fight. And another roach leg there. He also got into a fight, lost his leg. Oh, they were they were playing poker or something and had to give up their legs. Another one there. Now there weren't any active roaches in here when I opened it up, so obviously the fun and games finished and they left the place. But they sure made a mess. Now look down all down here. So a lot of it's not as bad as it could be. But I'd say we've got a few so we've got a few marginal joints around here that need to be cleaned up. Right there, that's pretty bad. So let's get started with this. I'm just going to flux and boil them and then throw it in the ultrasonic. Yeah, it's pretty damn vile, this stuff. So most of it doesn't actually eat through the track completely. It's more of a surface thing. Anyway, let's go with the fluxing and boiling. Oh, try, try not breathe any of this stuff in. It's, the trouble is it's light enough that if you knock it, it will, um, when it breaks, it will disperse. And if you happen to be taking a nice deep breath in at the time, you'll probably get the joy of snorting it up. We're really just looking for the bad corrosion points. But that resistor there, that could be trouble. These ones here. There was that ISO one. Uh, you, you could, you actually probably are the main culprit. That's my guess for the moment. SMC's taking a beating. There we go. There. Fortunately, it doesn't look like they got under the SMC, so I don't think we're going to need to have to um, take off the SMC in this case, thankfully. I mean, I'll do SMC replacements, that's not a problem, but it's nice to not have to. Uh, we spot of corrosion there. The ball looks fine.
Oh, someone up the road must be smoking and it's blowing down here. It's just giving me the old choke out. I really don't cope well in tainted atmospheres. At least not anymore. Start boiling this up. Definitely think I'm going to replace that cap down there before I even put it into the ultrasonic. Yeah, that fellow there is pretty bad too. Oh man, the smell of roasting poop as if I don't get enough of these sort of bad smells already given that you know we've got we're looking after seven cats believe me that creates a whole bunch of smell don't get me wrong I love the cats and all that but uh, can be a little problematic at times with how much waste material is produced now yeah, it probably is possible to just knock this off, but uh, yeah, that's that's not my thing. Go straight into the bin. Yeah, we can see there. See that one pad? It's all corroded over. So I think we did the right thing there. Come on. It's almost there. Uh, it's probably a good thing we did that. I'm not sure where that cap goes to. Have a look at the board view. So it's this cap here. PB G3 Hut Charger R. Okay. And the reason why I'm saying it's a good thing is because you can see all these points go up to over here. There's nothing close by. And then when we look at the board, we can see there's no trace there. So that's basically going directly into a veer under the pad and heading off to the rest of the board. So if we'd lost that, then we'd have to run a fairly long wire over to the other side of the board. Interestingly, it is not a normal decoupling cap, this one. You see here, it goes from U7100 and it AC couples into this MOSFET to and from the battery so uh, that's not your normal, see these are your normal decoupling type capacitors that just go straight to ground or something like that um, although those ones don't go to ground do they? yeah they go to ground um, yeah it's, it's not your normal decoupling cap it's a signal cap so it's a good thing we spotted that that could have caused dramas didn't really stick down as well as I wanted. So here we'll just hit it with a bit of solder. And we're all good. We even beat the hacko to it. Alright, so that's that one. Now the other one was up by the BIOS. There was this resistor here. I'm not entirely convinced it's in good health. Uh, it's actually okay, it's 15 ohms. And as far as I can remember, that's pretty close to what that one should be. Uh, I guess I should check. Okay, so it's this resistor up here. And yep, we can see it's 15 ohms, so that's all good. Still real inclined to... I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll, I'll simply clean up some solder. 
If it cleans up our calves older then we're good. I'm just worried about corrosion on the end caps. So it doesn't really want to... Okay, that's better. Probably could have some more flux on here, but... What's next? I'm moderately, conf moderately confident that that may have gotten us to a point where we can boot. We'll give it a shot. Okay, let's get a mag safe on. This is a 165, so it shouldn't go through the cycle. It should just go straight to boot. Whereas the 34-37 goes through the on-off, on-off. Plug this in and it should be booting, it's booting, it's flashing. Yeah, it's still booting there. I'll give it about a minute or so. Need to cast some shade onto there somehow, but it, there we go. Oh, that's still running. But it's running more than I ever did before, so I'm going to put that into the chassis. See if we can get a boot. Yeah, it says I've got a bong. Or Apple logo. Yeah, I think we're good. It was never getting that far before. So I'd say we're fixed. So there was that capacitor down there. It was one of the one of the less frequently encountered situations where it's not just a decoupling cap. It was actually an important one. Anyway, there we go. We're all fixed. So, until next time, catch you later and thanks for watching.